In this video, we're going to learn about what is set theory, set operation, and set type. George Cantor. Who is George Cantor? Between the years 1874 and 1897, George Cantor, a German mathematician and logician, invented or created a theory of abstract sets of entities and made it into a mathematical discipline. So, why we are using the sets? Can you say what are this? These are the butterflies. But can I group this butterfly into one common collection? These are all same type of animals. I can say this is a group of butterflies. In the same way, I can say in the ways all these are the balls. So for forming a group or collection of homogeneous types of objects or elements, we use the set theory. Set is defined as a collection of well-defined and distinct objects. So here, what is well-defined? Well-defined means it should have a definite truth and it should be countable. That is well-defined. Means if I say, find the number of uh, first five months of the years, you can be able to count what will be exactly number of that months. But if I say the collection of rich men in your town, you cannot make the collection because for making collection, you don't know what is the definition of rich men. That criteria may be rich men, may be the person who is earning annually 3 lakhs or more, $3,000 or more or so on. But here, the criteria for finding this collection is unknown. So, this cannot form a set. The collection of a rich man in your town is not a set. And the second is, so distinct. Set objects are distinct. Distincts mean no two elements of set will be the same. For example, the collection of number 1, 1, 2, 2 and 3, 3. 3, 4. Okay, this is not a set because here 1 is getting repeated twice, 2 is repeated. So each and every element should be appeared only once. Instead of that, if I say the collection of number 1, 2, 3, 4, so that will be called as a set. So what we have learned from this set is that each object of a set is called as element or member of a set. Capital letter like A to Z etc. are used to denote sets. Then small letters like small A to Z are used to denote element of a set. This belongs to symbol A's have a special importance in the set theory. An element A belongs to a set A can be written as A belongs to A. This is read as member or belongs to. And this is also called as a membership notation. If element is not present in the set so it is written as a doesn't belongs to a denotes that a is not an element of a set for example these are different colors red orange yellow i can see i can form this all of these are the colors i can label this collection as a color so this is a set of color but if i say whether black is a member of this set given a set that is colors so black is doesn't belongs to the given set a given set colors next how we will going to represent sets so for representation of set we have three different ways first is purely based on description format or statement format here we use to describe set in the statement format well-defined statement inside is present inside the set so set of all states of india Second form is roster or tabular form. Here we list all the elements of that set into the set separated by the commas. N is a set which consists of elements 1, 2, 3, 4. V is a set of vowels which consists of numbers which consists of characters E, I, O, U. And the third for representation format for set is rule or set builder method. Here we have a proper rule or a proper kind of some property. All elements satisfy some property. And how we write? We write, suppose A is my set. So X is an element of set such that this dot or bar is represented as such that X, X means the element of that set, which are, Satisfying some common property which satisfy the property. So property can be written in description format or mathematical format. For example, N is a set where X. N is a set. X is a member of set such that X is a number from 1 to 4. Again, V is a set of vowels. 
x is the element of this set and x is having property what property it has x is all vowels in english small alphabet so we will learn what are different operations we have on this set theory so two sets this is one set and this is second set if we want to perform some operation very first operation is union so set elements which are both in both the set or in either in first set either in second set or in both the set is called as union so this is s is my universal set and inside that we have many sets so in that we have set a set b set a is having members as 1 2 3 4 set b is having members as 1 3 5 7 so all this portion which is grabbed by this a and b this whole portion is called as a union and it is represented by u symbol intersection intersection is only the common portion between the two sets so this is the area which is commonly shared by both of these two sets or the elements 1 and 3 are present in both set a and in both set b so that's why we call this as a intersection so intersection is represented by this symbol and for this set intersection of a intersection b is 1 and 3 only the common elements the elements which are present in the both set the third is a disjoint set a set in which if you are having no element or uh, we can say that only uh, uh, in set a we are having some element and only in set b we are having some element and there is no element which is common inside be between this two set means intersection of this two set is null so that sets are called as disjoint set means there is no joining present between them they are separable the next operation is complement suppose i want to find the complement of this set a so i will say that whatever set i am i am having outside of this set that will be the result of my set so this is my universal set s which is having all of this element a is my set and complement of set can be represented either a dash a to the power c a to the a to the power bar a to the power delta symbol so complement of a will be the elements this whole thing minus this and whatever you will get that will be the complement of your set that is 5 6 7 8 9 10 10 are the elements which are not present in a but present in the universal set difference now this is most important operation because in the difference which set is present on the first hand side is very crucial now if i want to find a minus b so i will just only consider these four elements for finding the result i am calculating a minus b so i will just look whether uh, the elements are present in my uh, second uh, set that is b whether one is present in b yes so i will remove this for the calculation of the result whether two is present no whether three is present in b yes so i will remove this whether four is present no i will not consider any other elements of the set b so only whatever things I have left after calculation that will be the result of my a minus b. So a minus b will be two comma four, and the, in the same way b minus a only this set elements will be considered for the subtraction will be five comma seven, and symmetric difference. The next operation is symmetric difference. In the symmetric difference, what if what we do? We perform union of these two set minus intersection. Means the set elements which are in A or in B but not in both A and B. So how we calculate this? This is represented by plus and B. So this can be written as A union B minus A intersection B. So this is the representation for your symmetric difference. the next operation is cardinality cardinality is very simple operation which is just finding the number of distinct element present in your set so if i am telling you s is my universal set and it is having number from 1 to 10 so how many exactly numbers are present in s so cardinality is cardinality of set is represented by this symbol bar s bar and it is 10 for the set s cardinality of set b is 4 cardinality of set a is 4 this is about the operations of set now we will see what are theories we are having for the set 
so there are in total two theories but before that we will just look into the types of set this is also called as set operation suppose we are having two sets a and b and if we want to check which is the subset or proper subset so proper subset can be said as if your set a is less than b or the number of elements is the count of number of elements in set a is less than number of count of elements present in your b then your uh, this set are proper subset who is the subset a will be subset and b will be superset this is always a superset so a proper subset of a set a is a subset of a that is not equal to a in other words if b is a proper subset of a then all elements of b are in a but a contains at least one element that is not in b when simply we can say a, the number of elements in this should be less than number of elements present in b in b we are having one two three four okay there are four elements and in a we are having three element so the count at least one element should not be present in my a in the same way subset is represented by this symbol now here i can say a is less than equal to b so how to read this the number of element present in a can be less or can be equal to that of set b so the set elements which are in a or b but not in both a and b so that is called as a subset so here for this two set i can write this is a subset of b okay now here a is also a proper subset of b again if both the sets are equal they are having equal number of elements and the same elements 1 2 3 are the same elements and in the b 1 2 3 are same element so we can say a is subset of b now here a is not subset uh, proper subset of b because the count of elements are equal instead a is sub subset of b there are two theories available in set theory that is naive set theory and axiomatic set theory whatever theory we are using for uh, in this subject that is naive set theory a naive set theory is a science of naive set theory uh, is a non formalized theory there is no formula present for this theory and uh, a theory that uses a natural language to describe sets and operation on set so instead uh, describing by using describing by using some formulas we use some natural language some natural words for describing elements of that set the words and or if then not for some for every are treated as in ordinality mathematics but later on cantor found that uh, we can't perform some of this uh, task by using uh, only the simple mathematics we can we should also have to write some elements or some kind of uh, things uh, so later on he uh, labeled this naive set theory as cantorian set theory and he added some additional requirements for that naive set theory so he added like number of elements can be present as can be set as s set of elements where 1 2 3 are the members of the set for example now this theory which we use is normally is called as cantorian set theory and the next is axiomatic set theory in axiomatic by the name it says that it is having axioms axioms are the rules so axiomatic set theory was originally devised to read set theory of such paradoxes the most widely studied system of axiomatic set theory imply that all sets form a cumulative hierarchy means a theory in which set is always represented in some rule format in some uh, specific format so in that case we go for axiomatic set theory axiomatic set theory tends to use lower case letter for set and in naive set theory we use capital letter for representation of set and in axiomatic set theory we use small case letter for representation of set zermelo axiom theory is one of the set uh, axiomatic set theory which we are having so in that this is axiom of empty set what is the empty set 